Welcome back to Planet Tomon. Today we have someone with us who is a true master of his instrument. He is a brilliant clinician, teacher, Yamaha performing artist, and he's performed all over Europe in a wide variety of music ensembles from the Stuttgart Philharmonic to the European Jazz Orchestra, Egerlander Music Cotton, WDR Big Band, SWR Big Band. I could go on and on, but let's welcome Christoph Moshberger. So the last time you were with us here on Planet Tomon was at the end of 2018, I think. And a lot of things have happened since then. Uh, the thing foremost on my mind is how are you doing, first of all, personally with your health and also as a musician in this time of pandemic? It's a crazy time for, for every artist around the world. Um, but I'm, I'm fine. I'm uh, in, in good shape and I'm healthy and I'm doing well. That's good. the first yeah. thing. And I'm happy with my family here around, uh, around me and uh, enjoying um, this, this time at home. Mm. Even uh, the free time and but uh, as well the, the, the when I'm working, when I'm writing, when I'm um, yeah, working at home because that's a new experience for me. I've been on tour a lot before and now it stopped. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, but I'm for sure I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to be back on stage and um, meeting my friends and uh, my, my colleagues and yeah, be back on stage. Yeah, and it's just music. not the same. <laughs> it's just not the same yes. when, you, when you can't perform. Exactly. Um, exactly. I've noticed that you have a Patreon site, patreon.com slash Moshburger, where you mm -hmm. give online lessons and yes. things of that nature. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, I started Patreon... Uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic actually in 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 april i guess uh, mm. because a friend of mine uh, started this as well and i thought it was a good idea and i talked to him and then it grows and grows and grows and now uh, it's it's i think it's more than 220 uh, patrons uh, i have uh, really crazy trumpet players <laughs> who are interested in in my stuff and this is really great actually and it's big fun to do these tutorial videos and the whole stuff uh, what i'm doing there is i i pick up some uh, topics of trumpet playing really small topics um, most of the time and are explaining it in videos in tutorial videos and are and i give um, the exercises and the whole studies and things uh, for me to my patrons to my students actually uh -huh. and yeah that it's the that's the core of the whole thing this is a unique situation for me because um, I'm a trumpet player and I'm interviewing an exceptional trumpet player and um, I would like to pick your brain as well as a whole bunch of other people. I've re received some questions on social media. Claudio Hoigan, hey, any advice on learning material about writing for horn sections? Is there learning material out there? I think is the question. Um, Oh, actually, I don't know. I've never been uh, studying uh, the whole writing thing, arrangements and, and thing. I, I learned it by doing. So oh. I started, uh, oh, sorry. I started writing um, for my own horn section in my productions, in my, in my bands. And uh, we checked it out and uh, yeah, and I got some experience and I went on. So it's, I don't have any like, uh, what it's called like a method or like mm. a learning book it's not i don't have any advice sorry for that but i think the best thing is follow your ears what what do you like and then go on and go on especially uh the next thing is if you do that if you are writing a horn section try to record it and then you can judge over it that, oh, yeah. not before that, recordings that's don't lie that's, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah <laughs> you're right <laughs> um this is probably a good time to ask you about zwei takter it's a, a sheet music book. It's I, I wrote it. I, I began to wrote duets for brass players uh, two years ago, and especially uh, duets in this whole um, folk music, Alpine, Bavarian, German, Austrian folk music um, tradition. I guess like if you want to play a polka with your colleague on the tenorhorn or on the trombone, you can do it with um, mm. with these duets. And I began to wrote these um, yeah these these little tunes. And in the pandemic, I got the time to finish the whole thing and to um, publish the whole thing and to give it into the whole world. And I started to record these um, these little duets with some of uh, colleagues of mine, like uh, Hans Gansch, the great Hans Gansch, uh, a trumpet player from Austria, and some Alexander Wurz on tenorhorn and um, some of these guys. And yeah, it's 
the people uh, are really like it. That's the feedback I get, and yeah, I'm really happy about that. And yeah, it it motivates me to write more stuff like this, more duets, more jamber music, especially in these different types of music I do in my daily life. This next question is coming from a person who wants to know how much force do you need to push the valves? And this question is coming from um, apparently a, an ailment he suffers from rheumatism. And he wants to know, is this going to be a problem pushing the buttons? Oh, this is a quite m medical question uh, yeah. a bit. Like it's may maybe f more for a doctor, but I don't need uh, much, much much force to to push the button that's what he yeah. mean no? yeah. oh, oh, yeah, i think uh there is you can use different what what it's called the federn maybe you can translate um, it the, uh, the springs the springs yeah in in it because this is the, there are some of them are a bit more strong yeah. and some a bit more light uh, lighter and then um that that gives a bit a bit variety of of the force you need. I think you won't be, it won't be a problem actually. I hope. I wish you all the best. Uh, the last time you, you were on Planet Tomon, and uh, you had a really shiny trumpet, and it looks yes. a little bit different now. Um, yes, so it this is. leads into a couple questions we have um, from Nika Losa. What do you play? And she parentheses instrument specifications. And mm -hmm. there's another question, how many mouthpieces or trumpets in total do you have at home? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need to open up my secret room uh, uh, yeah. with all my instruments. So I think I have a lot of mouthpieces uh, in my box, but I do use actually only one or two or three of them. So mm -hmm. um, maybe 40 mouthpieces or, or 30 wow. mouthpieces, which I get from from different colleagues the, the last years but they actually don't use them it's on they're only there but um trumpet wise and flugel hunts i think it's maybe 10 or 12 or 13 instruments in here with cornets and piccolo and some flugel horns and some trumpets and um, yeah this is that's roundabout but but uh in my in my daily life i, I use yeah, one flugelhorn, one rotary, one uh, piston flugelhorn, and uh, a C trumpet, and a B trumpet, and a piccolo trumpet, and sometimes a cornet, and sometimes a different B trumpet. So that it's that's the thing actually. And to this special instrument, this is my my main instrument, and it's actually the same trumpet uh, I had with me last time. Oh. So this part. The silver part is original from last time, mm -hmm. and what it's uh, what changed is the the bell, mm. because uh, I started to do with Yamaha uh, a selection model, which is uh, these these kind of selection models are uh, instruments which are uh, tuned and um, changed uh, from the artist side. So mm -hmm. we 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 gone give our wish to the to the to the atelier, and the guys over there are. Are changing and are tuning this instrument up, and so uh, we started to uh, to change the bell in a in a in a gold brass bell. Oh, it's a raw gold brass bell, and that's actually the the the, the biggest change. So, and now I use a heavy cap on the third valve, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we started to this model from the LA trumpet. This okay. is the, the so Yamaha Gebergeron model, yeah. the the A three three five LA. Uh, with a gold brass bell and some tiny little things. I think there is a different cork or a different thing on the Wasserklappe, what mm -hmm. it's called, okay. I don't know. The spit valve, yeah. water key. Yeah. And my uh, intention to change this instrument was uh, that I want a, a bit more variety of sound in one instrument. The spectrum is is wider than with a normal um, brass bell. It's counterintuitive, isn't it, with the, with the um, more copper content in the bell. I figured it would always just be darker, but those bells actually, when you get up high and you start giving some gas, they, they really do light up. I was actually surprised mm -hmm. myself to discover that. I did notice you have an album out called Home that you recorded with the Blechhaufen. Yeah. And, um, could you tell us a little bit about this? And I'm just dying to know that that has to be like a bucket list experience, cutting an album with the Blechhaufen. You know, what was that <laughs> like recording with these excellent musicians such as yourself? And, the, and they're so, they have, they remind me a little bit of you because they have this whole um, Bavarian folk style, like really down. But at the same time, it's like, oh, by the way, I can sound like uh, Miles Davis and Maynard Ferguson. Check this out. You know, it's like, whoa, where did this come from? You know, they're extremely versatile. And I'm like, okay, that's a good fit. 
uh, mm. Christoph Moshberger and Dub Lechhaufen. I m met these guys some years ago um, on a concert. I played with another group and then afterwards we, uh, we've been at the bar and are talking and it really, uh, yeah, it was really familiar from the beginning on. So it's, we, we really uh, came together and, and I like these guys really, really much. So um, I was thinking about doing a solo album, but I um, wasn't sure with which kind of group I want to do it because there is a, a, a big variety of styles and um, bands I play in and I really like the sound together with the guys. And then we did all these different genres I like so much in this special sound, in this Blechhaufen sound and in this brass sound and uh, I wrote arrangements and Albert from Blechhaufen wrote arrangements and some guys. And yeah, that was really, really cool. And now we are even waiting for the, our first uh, concert with the, with the new live program, with Home, actually. I hope it's going to be soon. I've sorted these questions by musical advice questions and kind of personal questions. And this is one of the last ones from the uh, personal side. Mm -hmm. How do you feel playing in a concert? Walk us through that. Like, like whenever I have to play, I always, I'm nervous beforehand. I have butterflies and then... Walk, walk us through what you feel through what you feel when you perform i have butterflies as well so but most of the time in a good way actually because i have some really uh, some butterflies which which are motivating me to giving all in this special moment and that's the thing i always try to um focus on uh, if it works for me then i'm feeling great and for sure there are uh, some some concerts which I really uh, yeah I'm not that relaxed and I'm a bit of uh, nervous and uh, a bit of anger in the whole thing that that's it's, sometimes it is yeah but uh, I try to relax the whole time and focus on the good things and focus on the audience and focus on the moment and the people around me making music with because this is for me the most uh, interesting thing at uh, in making music to to f to be uh spontane spontaneous playing like so, so to to react on what is what is what is happening around me i'm not interesting in 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 playing a piece exactly the same way every evening hmm. Actually, I think I can do this because I'm not I'm not able to do it like uh, maybe if I have to play a Haydn concert every evening in in different uh, on different places on the earth, I would be so nervous because I, I really uh, I have a big respect for all these classical uh, guys. They are flying around the world and they are playing the Brandenburg Concerto and then the Haydn Concerto and these things, and everyone in the audience knows exactly how the piece is going before the guy is on stage. So they know, okay, now there's the high uh, E-flat and then the things, and this is what me what, what stresses me too. So uh, I try to avoid these things. Cadenzas, for example, if I play a Harry James trumpet concerto or something. It's a hard piece, but uh, especially this cadenza, I, I, I play it different every day, a bit different, because when I feel this way, I play this way. And this is, most of the time, it's it's right at the moment. How much do you practice a day? This is a question by Jack O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. um, this is different. When I'm at home and I have my normal um, working day, there is some kind of maybe one hour basic practicing every day, which uh, I warm up and I do in my basics, my fundamentals, my, my, my exercises. And after that, the whole... Um, Practi practicing for the for this stuff I have to do ah. begins like yeah. uh, learning uh, new pieces or um, yeah checking out some some stuff and uh, working on on new new stuff and yeah but I think at least one hour actually okay. or maybe forty five minutes this is the the uh, when I'm at home when I'm on tour I don't practice at all actually if i play a concert in the evening i don't practice in the morning and and the, like like these things i i really focus on the on the concert but what i try to do uh when I, when i have a practice day it's at least one hour up to uh oh. open end but um there are some days off as well so when i'm have a tour which maybe i play four concerts in four days 
I come home, maybe I rest for one day oh. or maybe two days if I have to do other things and I or want to enjoy free time with my family and the whole thing. Sure. Um, then I have days off, even for my, uh, also for my, for my head, <laughs> for the whole system. And then I start again. Yeah. Okay. We have a series of questions here from various people on, um, they're basically trying to get a free lesson out of you. That's okay. Um, so <laughs> That's what it's about, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Christian Dietz has a question. When you play, why does it sound so easy? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Gary, that's a serious question. You ask it. I'm like, okay. So. Uh, I think um, it's a good question. Yeah. I, I try to relax when I'm playing with the whole body. I try to only use these parts of my body, which I really need. And I try to focus on that. And it, this is easier when I'm relaxed in mind uh, than uh, when I'm stressed, for sure. Yeah. It, it does influence our breathing and the breathing is maybe the most important thing about playing a uh, trumpet. Do you have exercises that you, um, that you can better your, your airflow? Yes, I have. Uh, I do some breathing exercises um, more and more. I began the whole thing even maybe one year ago. I didn't, I haven't done it active, actively before Mm -hmm. from time to time but now i really try to to um to have it in my in my daily business uh, and this is uh based on this this whole uh, christian steenstrup uh, exercises I, i don't know if you know them with this if you have your finger in front of your mouse and you can hear the air flow mm -hmm. at your finger even in then out the whole time the air is moving Mm. moving in and moving out and this is a good thing for your head and a good for your imagination that you have to move the air and then uh, i i like to do some airflow studies with really really good music and you can play all these great um, melodies like the air from bach or uh, vivaldi's winter or maybe bernstein somewhere uh, from west Side story there's so great music um written so use use it and make it to your personal trumpet uh, airflow exercise i have a question i saw that video and do you have any tips on circular breathing because you were circular breathing in that thing all over the place and it sounded so clean do you have any any tips um Yeah, I think there is a lot of. Uh, I, I really. This is one of the topics in Patreon I want to do, and okay. I'm. I need to to uh, to think about it before because it's normal for me, and and, and I learned it within 12 years uh, okay. at the age of 12. So the first challenge is that you can manage these um, the mechanical things like mm -hmm. the step by step thing. Right. So breathe in and push out and the whole thing, and the next step is that you can. Try to fix your ambiture and try don't that you can hold the tone that you don't mm. hear it uh, that you won't hear it uh, when you're playing because this is um, the, the the most difficult thing actually if you go especially if you go higher and there is a natural range I guess where is it possible and then over that it's not possible to do it because oh. you need to uh, more for sure more pressure and more uh, air activity and you can handle that with your cheeks yeah cheeks yep um this is a question from harry's music channel um tips for besseter ansprache by pedal tonin this is tips for a better response playing pedal tones there's one big mistakes uh many trumpet players are doing when when they go into the pedal register you're thinking about playing a low tone so thinking like playing tuba mm -hmm. like this it's not uh that bad but you have to fix the whole um, your your amateur a bit more close because if it's too wide open you need so much air to mm -hmm. let the the lips flow so think a bit more compact like in okay. it like hold it f and give it a, a bit of um, st stability like like mm. hold hold the tone and don't force the air too much Because okay. if you, you, you overblow, you would overblow this slow. The, the, the lips are really um, moving 
really really slow because the, the lower the sound the, the slower the lips are moving so that's that's physics so keep keep it relaxed and try it from zero to this to the, to this tone so not from from loud to low so even from zero to mm. low from, okay from, that's my and then you can can handle with the ansprache with the with the attack a bit more okay there's another question here why don't you play a rotary valve trumpet but you mentioned earlier you have rotary instruments uh yes i have one you have uh, one, one one yeah uh i never played on rotary trumpets actually because uh where i'm from in germany we don't play these rotary trumpets it's oh. I, i grew up in a brass band so really in a village and playing in the in in the in the music capella in the blast capella and um we play um american trumpets like uh all over uh, if you are in in austria for where, where i live now everybody is playing rotary trumpets mm. it's a difference from region to region and um the playing a rotary trumpet is not that familiar to me right because uh, i i feel always better with this kind of uh waves so from the from the whole thing and of course uh in this whole um folk music uh, thing and and uh, brass band thing and egerländer thing uh, especially i play um a rotary flugelhorn this is uh, a special thing and because it reacts uh, different and it's it blends different with the other players because we play all the same and mm -hmm. yeah and this is this is cool for me and i like it but um most of the time the choice is for me it's the it's the yeah the what do you say the piston or the, uh, what do you uh, say? piston It's funny because there I never had to define it before because we just always called it a trumpet. You know? trumpet, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the rotary trumpet. <laughs> This yeah, is okay. a huge yeah. point of contention at work, by the way. My, my boss is an old-school German Meister, and there's no tradition mm -hmm. in the piston instruments and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, but I don't, <laughs> I don't like them. So yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going through the list here, and there's one last question. Mm -hmm. Do you have tips for beginners in improvisation? Improv. The first step is that you creating a melody in your head about a tune. So, and you need this imagination and this this creativity to to imagine a new melody or a variation of the the theme of the song, the melody which is which is already there. And then you have to try to to bring it to your horn or your instrument. Doesn't matter which instrument it is. So, and the easiest thing is to uh, to try to sing it. And then try to do it with the instrument and try to bring this connection between the instrument and the whole thing. So it's the first step, it's about soul, it's about creating a melody, bringing it to your horn. And if you're able to do that, you can feed this up with the whole knowledge you need maybe about harmonics and uh, uh, scales and the whole thing. It's less uh, the theory, th th theory thing mm. than more the, the, the soul and the... Um, the crea creativity so for me yeah. yeah cool good advice i imagine if you get too too bogged down with theory and um scales and things you'll maybe play a good solo but who would want to listen to it you know it really does have to come from inside is there anything else you want to talk about this is kind of we went through my cheat sheet uh don't know maybe um i think we talked about patreon uh, yeah. i would welcome every trumpet player uh Uh, there it's actually it's in German I mm -hmm. started it in German and English but it's so uh, it's a lot of work so for all the German speakers out there uh, yeah you can if you want some uh, in, in small small hints and impulse and things uh, in your daily practice thing at to at home uh, maybe this is a good opportunity and yeah okay. maybe check it out uh, Come over, get follow me uh, on social media. It would be great. Cool. And yeah, and stay healthy. That's the most important thing in the moment, yeah. I guess. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Christoph Moshberger, for your time and your input. All the links that were discussed in this video regarding Christoph Moshberger will be down below. Please leave your comments, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>